My name's Matt Barwick and um, I worked with the uh, Murray-Darling Basin Authority, then the Commission, um, the Native Fish Strategy specifically um, as Research Program Coordinator for the program um, for a number of years. Look, I, I loved it. Um, it was one of those things I've worked with fish in various capacities for my entire career and really um, obviously knew about the strategy before I started to work with that group and really wanted to. Um, one thing as an, from an outsider, it was very clear that there was a pretty unique culture. Everyone works with fish because they are passionate about that area. I think you, um, it's, it's really what draws people to the profession, to the, to the field. And um, I knew about the strategy, what it was trying to achieve, and more importantly knew about the people um, before I actually um, started working there and it was really just that it was that culture and I suppose that everyone felt very strongly about what they were trying to do um, that was what drew me and it was probably uh, more than I expected uh, once I once I was working with that group you know just the, the level of devotion and um, um, the, uh, the commitment to the vision um, you know it, it's all there and um, I mean quite obviously that's why there was such a high level of high number of people that were still working on the strategy at the end um, that were also um, instrumental in its uh, you know its in inception i suppose I, I look at it primarily in terms of the, the the research so some of the research that was done was um, best practice and changed our thinking certainly on a national scale and and also influenced thinking internationally as well which is really exciting when you see i mean it's not an, not an insignificant amount of money, but it certainly wasn't an enormous amount of money that was invested in research to achieve the benefits that came out of it. I mean, obviously, um, in terms of the way research was used in an adaptive way, certainly the Cedar Hume program is a great example. So we didn't realise, although it's intuitive, that fish needed to move downstream as much as they needed to move upstream, but equally, little fish needed to move just as much as big fish, and that was really that was, that was just a, a light bulb moment, but then that information was rapidly incorporated into the way we build fishways, the changing the way we build them, so that little fish um, were catered for and downstream passage was something that we started to, to look at. It's a fantastic example of um, research not occurring in a vacuum, you know, it's, it's just plugged straight into management um, and, and as a result of that we've got 2,000 kilometres of river um, you know, open to fish of all sizes um, and they're moving in their thousands and the research and the monitoring has shown that. So the, the things that I'm proud of, I suppose, are the things I'm not proud of is the state of our rivers and our fish. Um, and the unfortunate reality is that we, the, the problems aren't fixed. There's still a lot that needs to be done. The things I am proud of is, is recognising that we've come some way towards addressing those problems through the research that's been done. Um, and um, um, that's, that's a really good thing. Yeah. Some of the work that's happened on, uh, at, at during the, the wrap up of the strategy has been to really do a stock take, so what do we know? Um, and that's a really useful thing for any research program um, or any strategy. And uh, so we've got a very clear understanding now of, of what is known. Um, and so that helps to inform identifying what are the existing knowledge gaps, what don't we know? Um, now the, the way we address those knowledge gaps will change going forward, there's no doubt about that, but I think that ultimately that provides a lot of opportunities. So um, uh, uh, th there's a lot of ways we can make this work, we have to be a little bit more creative, but I think that, um, um, you know, uh, that certainly there are, there, are, there are ways that we can um, address the research needs that we need to. and. Um, yeah, we just need to get on with the job, I guess. In reality, the thing that we can't lose sight of is the fact that our, our fish resources are really important culturally, um, economically, um, socially, uh, and they need healthy rivers, healthy waterways um, uh, to, to, to survive. So we, um, as we're, we're moving into an age where um, um, we're very focused on uh, the water that sits in the river, but the river itself is important and the, the fish uh, are obviously critical to the people. So uh, really, um, we just need to maintain focus on um, the great work that's been done by the strategy, the fact that it's the start of something, not the end, 
Um, and ultimately, if people value fish as much as I think that they do, um, you know, we'll continue uh, to, to achieve really good things um, under the strategy, um, funded through a variety of different means. And, um, you know, it's, I guess what I'm, what I'm really trying to say is um, uh, the, the people don't disappear and the energy doesn't disappear and the strategy is still there and relevant and useful. Um, uh, we, we just need to continue to work together um, in the way that we have been and um, good things will continue to come from that.